when I first started racing to where I where I went and how far I'd come just by working one little piece at a time. That's so cool. You know, you, you live life based on experiences. Every life leaves a trail of lessons. Join me as we interview the most amazing people. The Conversation. One of my mentors told me once, I, and I loved this, and I don't know if you'll like it, hopefully you do. Sure. It's like, you know, when you feel like there's a lion or something ready to attack you, yep. and you're like running from it, then the, the best thing you can do, it's the scariest thing though, is you just turn head on, mm -hmm. and you look at the lion and it becomes a kitty. Yeah, absolutely. Is that what you're saying with your message? Is that part of it to like look your fear in the face and attack it? When you bring that question up or you, in the way that you present it, like I always think of a lion and a gazelle, right? And you're like, as a gazelle, you're saying you need to turn around and face, face your foe. I'm more on the side that I'm the lion, you uh -huh. know? The gazelle sits around and he reacts from fear oh, or he reacts from a, from a survival aspect to where the lion is more proactive and if he doesn't hunt, he doesn't eat, right? Uh -huh, right. And so it's being more on that side of it even. In the, so you never feel fear? No, 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 and that's not what I'm saying at uh -huh. all. Obviously, I have fear, and, 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 and to be honest, when I had my accident, I was very afraid. Um, I wasn't afraid for where I would end up. I was fearful of what I knew I had to go through, and I didn't have a choice, mm -hmm. um, especially in my recovery. Um, so no, I, I you know, definitely um, have fearful moments. It's, it's whether or not you let that fear overcome you, mm -hmm. and I think that's more what you were talking yeah, about, or whether you try and drive through it. How do you do that? Uh, I think it's just, so a lot of times when we have situations for like me and my accident, right? Like the whole idea of from the first time they came in a few days after my accident and the physical therapy came in and she wanted to sit me up on the side of the bed just to start experiencing weight bearing again. And I'm telling you that that was the moment where it really so came to me, you know, there was this overwhelming sense of realization on what where I was and what I had to go through mm. because the pain I experienced and then sitting me up that first time and just weight bearing on my back on the bed it it was indescribable to be honest I mean just breath gone um just overwhelming and wow. and in that and the weight and pressure I felt in that time was almost a metaphor for the weight and pressure that I was going to have yeah. in my recovery and journey, trying to get back to ho at least part whole again, right? Yeah. And so in that moment, there was an overwhelming amount of fear mm. of how, how am I gonna do this? Like, I don't want to do this. Mm. I don't wanna experience all this pain. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't wanna have to relearn everything this way. Yeah. And, and so a lot of times that's what it is, is with fear, it's this overwhelming big picture thing, right? Like that's what you go to. And so to look at my whole recovery as a whole, too much. Too much, exactly. And that's where the fear comes from. So I think uh, in a way that you, you, you talk about attacking that fear and attacking that weakness in our life is to break it down. Mm. And just one piece at a, point, at a time, you know, one task at a time. It was first learning how to sit up myself, like mm -hmm. in bed. Um, it was learning how to, you know, re rebuilding myself, but only taking on one fine point at a time, you know, learning how to dress myself, learning how to get myself in and out of bed into the wheelchair again, you know, building strength on how to to balance, you know, and then then learning wheel, wheelchair tasks. And it wasn't, it wasn't the whole set of tasks as far as like, this is how I'm gonna live life in a wheelchair. Yeah. It's like, well, 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 how do I, you know, get through doorways safely? How do I, you know, how do I turn around in, in, a, in a tight environment safely? And when you yeah. looked at it at a whole, it was just way too much. Exactly. And so, and so that's, that's where I think that comes from or, or how you attack that fear is um, just one piece at a time, one step at a time. Like, how did you come with this? How did I you know I think that? a lot of it was built over time through my racing career uh, and racing motorcycles. And, and, and 
doing something where it was like a, lo a lot of obstacles and, and, and it was something as passionate about it as I was, Yeah, it didn't naturally come to me. Oh. I wasn't a natural ability thing where it was just, I was good at, at you know, riding dirt bikes and racing them and so I just went with it. It was oh. more of a, it was a very passion driven thing, but I was not naturally good at it. I really struggled. Oh, wow. And so it was like in that struggle, it was, it was, well, how do I, you know, how do I get better at, the, it, you know, cornering? How do I... Okay, so that's what get. you just broke and it so, down And so, yeah, there. it's like breaking down. It's like first I got good, at, you know, better at cornering. Then I got better at, you know, handling certain jumps or obstacles. And, wow. And, and, and so, yeah, and so it was just this idea that over time when I look back at, you know, when I first started racing to where I, where I went and how far I'd come just by working one little piece at a time. That's so cool you know, you, you live life based on experiences. And then so you did yeah. that again. Yeah, exactly. You replicated your success <laughs> in another forum. Exactly. That's exactly. amazing. That's your, you are so inspiring. Oh, thanks. If someone is out there and they're, we said fear, fear feels like an overwhelming sensation. Like it's just too much. I yes. can't even move forward. So, I mean, there might be some people out there that are going through that and it could be in a physical realm. It could be financial could be in a relationship like what's your message and what do you what do you tell them yeah i think that there's two key factors that i that i really try and diagnose and use in that one obviously is attitude that we talked about but it's not just a matter of having the right attitude it's having the right attitude coupled with action mm -hmm. if you think of a rowboat um a vast body of water and you're just sitting there out in the middle of the rowboat you can have the greatest attitude ever and be you know the glass is half full, right? Like, I'm going to get through Keep this. Keep saying your it's, affirmations yeah, and the whole night. I'm going to get that. back to shore. Like, <laughs> something's going to happen. This is going to work. We're going to get there, you know? Yeah, I love And it's this. like, if you just sit there and have the right attitude, that doesn't mean you're going to get anywhere. No. You know, at some point, you know, to be frank, you have to reach into the bottom of the boat, you have to pick up the damn oars, and you have to start stroking. Yeah. And it may seem inter insurmountable. It may seem that you're never going to reach, you know, that bank, but... One stroke at a time, like get through that. And so, yeah, there's that attitude with action, and and that's and that's how you, you gotta you gotta accomplish that. The other side of it, I think, is setting your own success or defining your own success, especially in today's world, when social media and outside influence has such an impact. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, we'll base our success off of what others perceive it should be right. versus what we actually want for ourselves or what we feel is a success in our lives. Yeah. You have to be in a, in a spot where you really define your own success. And so like for me with my accident, you know, I've kind of told you about my faith and, and why I felt like it happened for a reason. Well, just because I felt that way, there, there doesn't mean there wasn't other people in my life that were coming to me and, and feeling like they were supporting me and saying like, you can walk again, it will happen. Like, you know, we, you have to just keep believing that this will happen and, 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 you know, and keep driving towards that. And to be honest, like that drove me nuts because I was in a sense where I believe this accident happened for a reason. And my, my definition of success wasn't pinpointed around whether I oh, walked again. again or not. Oh my gosh, yes. It was how I lived my life in a wheelchair and there was a reason behind that. And so it was, so my success was defined by getting through this and living the same life I did before um, with the same passion and same competitive drive, whether I was in a wheelchair or not. And, and so if I had focused on what others wanted my success to be and be like, well, if I don't walk again, I'm not a success. Like that would really bring me, you know, that fear would overcome me. Because um, it so, wasn't your definition of success. Exactly. Yeah. So by defining where I wanted to go, where I wanted to be, you know, having that passion, having focused on that drive, that's what helps me, you know, or helped me overcome that fear as well. That's and so, so good. So attacking, you know, attitude with action and defining your own success, I think are huge keys That's awesome. and overcoming that fear. The overcoming fear. Oh my God. So good. Yeah. So good. Thank <laughs> you. I took so much away from this about how to overcome that, that, uh, 
overwhelming sense of fear that sometimes we can have by just breaking it down, chunking it down step by step. We'd love to hear what this meant to you. Please comment below your own story of how you've overcome your own fears. And as always, like, subscribe, and ding that bell. Talk to you guys later, bye.